In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to one company creating a fully owned subsidiary. We're going to say the parent company or the one that's going to be creating the subsidiary will be P, P company, the parent company, and then S company will be the subsidiary that will be created. When we go through this problem, the information will be on the left-hand side. We're going to enter that information into the blue area on the right-hand side. So typically, whether we have this light blue area, that's where we're going to be entering the data. We will actually record uh, journal entries here and then post them to a trial balance. We want to give some quick little trial balance here so we can actually see these items posted to the trial balance. This is what is often missing in many accounting problems when you see them in accounting textbooks. I think it's really useful to have. All right, let's see what we have here. P created S, a 100% owned subsidiary. P balance sheet before and after transactions are below. So we have P company. P company is the company. Then they created a wholly owned subsidiary. They didn't buy the subsidiary. They didn't buy a wholly owned other company. They created one. So they took part of their uh, information, part of their assets and liabilities, transferred it into the subsidiary. This is different than purchasing. And note, in this case, we're not going to have a situation where we're basically going to uh, have to put a fair market value kind of items happening here as we create the new company, because it's not really an exchange type of transaction. It's really, it's really one company basically transferring their their assets into into another form into the subsidiary. So keep that in mind as we go. So P uh, transfers to S both assets and liabilities, assets and payable. Uh, P uh, shares P received uh, four thousand nine hundred at ten dollars par. So what does that mean? The P is going to be transferring their assets and liabilities into this new company that they just created, S. And then in exchange for that, S is going to be giving the equity interest in the company, which is basically all of S's shares, which is 4,900 shares at $10 par value. All right. So we're going to back into this first of all, this first time, because what we have here is the balance sheet before the transaction, the balance sheet after the transaction. So that means that if we look at the difference, these aren't, this isn't a consolidated balance sheet. We're talking this is P company only before and after the transaction. Therefore, if we take the difference between these, we can, we can piece out what the actual transaction was. So what we're going to do is take the difference between the balance sheet before and after. We're going to piece together what the actual transaction was. And then we'll basically repost it over here into our, our trial balance so that we can see that posting process again. Uh, so we can see it kind of both ways, deconstructing it and then reconstructing it. Okay, so let's do this. If we go to cash, we're going to say this equals the 63,000 minus the 22,000. That means it looks like they transferred cash of 41,000 into the new the new shell company, the new S corporation, or the new uh, company S, the new company. So then if we do that, we, it looks like they transferred 51 of the receivables. I'm just subtracting these out. 23 of the other assets now this one's a little bit funny we got the 23,000 what is that that's going to be part of the transaction that s put on the books when they when they recorded when they created or created the new company when they company s so when company p created company s we're looking at the two balance sheets for company p the parent company when p created s then they're going to have to put this on the books as part of the journal entry. That's going to be the 123. We'll see that when we start to con construct our journal entry. Land looks like was put in uh, 1,000. And then building and equipment, uh, 72,000. And then accumulated depreciation is 44. Notice we didn't revalue this because, again, they're creating the subsidiary. They're not buying uh, the subsidiary here. So then we're going to be summing up. Let's just sum this up and see if it uh, if we get a, a, a tying out here when we sum up the bottom or the liabilities and equity. So then the accounts payable, I'm going to subtract out the accounts payable. And it looks like transferred over uh, 21 of the accounts payable. Bonds remains the same. Common stock, uh, no change. And the retained earnings, no change. So if we sum this up then they get the 21,000. 21,000 both sides, that looks good. Okay, so this is basically the journal entry. We basically backed into the journal entry here. Now let's think about actually recording the journal entry using this data. So we're going to take this, we're going to record this big long journal entry, which would be P creating company S transference. Let's, re let's look at this then on P's side of things, and then let's look at this on S's side of things. These are two separate companies now, S being a brand new one, P being the parent company. 
So I'm going to do this a little bit backwards because I want to I want to create this in such a way that it's going to be uh, easy for us to construct the journal entry rather than putting the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm going to say, okay, well, let's just, I'm not going to worry about debits on top, credits on the bottom. I'm just going to say, well, what happened to cash? Here? Let's just go from top to bottom here. Cash is going down. If I'm talking about company P, if I look at, if I say this is P's, uh, P's balance sheet now, and I'm going to say this is their beginning balance. Well, they transferred cash to S, which is going to be down here, right? So, so we're going to say, all right, then the cash is going down. So that's pretty straightforward. Cash is cash. And we're going to say cash is going down. So I'm just going to reconstruct this thing and say that's going to be, I'm going to say negative in the cell. Negative of, to put it a credit, I'm going to represent my credits with negative numbers. And I think that'll, uh, as we work through this, you'll see kind of why that works mathematically with their, with our worksheet, so we'll highly recommend putting your credits in the credit column here and with negative numbers. And then I'm gonna say, all right, accounts receivable. Let's take a look at that one. Accounts receivable, uh, it's gonna be credited. So I'm gonna put in H3, a negative, and then scroll back down and pick up that uh, 51. Then we've got other assets. So I'm gonna say, all right, other assets went down as well. So let's pick that up and say other assets i'm going to say negative of the 23. now i might say okay i don't really understand that investment or that might be kind of like the plug transaction typically so i'm going to put that at the bottom here i'm going to leave that alone for now i'm going to say all right land land two let's go down to land we transferred some of that land over and that's going to be a credit of the uh 1000 and then the building so the building gonna go back down and say building oh i picked the number up the number doesn't go there the word building and equipment not just building and then i'm going to say negative on the credit side and we'll pick up the number for that one now the accumulated depreciation, easy to get mixed up. It's a contra asset account. So it's going to be kind of going the opposite way here. So I'm going to say that's going to be a debit, right? So I'm going to say, all right, there's the accumulated depreciation. Now I want a debit here. I want it to be positive. It's a negative number down here. I need it to be positive. So once again, I'm going to say negative, which will flip the sign. So instead of equal negative of that number. So there's our 44 on that side all right and then well, let's go down to the to the liabilities let's say all right well, what happened with the liabilities we got accounts payable looks like that was transferred pick up the old accounts payable down here and doesn't look like anything else was transferred so we're going to say the accounts payable uh went down so accounts payable that means it's got to be a debit because accounts payable is a liability account we're going to do the opposite thing to it so i have to put a negative in the debit so, oh no i don't need a negative Anyways, I want a positive 21,000 in this side. So I'm going to say it should be equal that 21,000. Okay. So now what I would typically do, like this is what you would normally do to create this thing, right? If I was to say, all right, I'm going to create another subsidiary. What are we going to do? We're going to transfer in uh, cash, accounts receivable, other assets, land's going to go in there, the accumulated depreciation and so on. And then we'll just make that journal entry. And then, okay, well, what's the difference there? What does that mean? I mean, how do, do our debits and credits reconcile? And then I'd say, well, let me highlight this thing and say, check it out. 123, no, it's off by 123,000. Well, what is that going to be? That's going to be our investment in S company. So that's going to be an investment in S company. So I'm going to say, all right, that's going to be an asset. That's going to be our invest because we fully own S company. So that's going to be our investment in S company. So I could pick up that number. I like to do the plug formula. I call this the plug formula, which is the negative sum. So negative sum of all the debits and credits thus far. Notice how much easier it is to make this formula given the fact that I have negative credits over here. A lot more easier to make this formula <laughs> than if you had just positive numbers because then you'd have to subtract them out. Not too, do not too much more difficult, but you'll see, I, I believe that if you work with this worksheet long enough, you'll see it's a lot easier if you make your credits negative numbers. All right, and then, then I'm gonna go back over here and say, all right, well, let's post this thing out then. And we can see we're in balance now, just if I the debits equal the credits so that's the 188 and that's the 188 so let's go ahead and post this thing out so i'm going to say cash 
if this was our beginning balance, we're going to say, okay, what would happen then? This is our beginning balance. I'm going to post this just in a worksheet, kind of like an adjusting entry format, just so we can quickly see things and say, all right, that goes down to 22. And, and basically, I'm just reconstructing now what happened over here. These are our beginning balances, are now our beginning balances here. We're going to now post the journal entry to get to our ending balances. So we're basically just doing the same thing. So we deconstructed it. Now we're reconstructing it. So now we're constructing it as if it was happening. Now we're happening in real time. So this is what we started with. We said, oh, now we're going we're gonna to take out accounts receivable and transfer that on over to, uh, to the S Corp. And then the other assets, that's going to go out. So it goes from 41 down by the 23 uh, and so on. And then we're going to go down, let's go down to this one, land. Land, we're going to transfer $1,000 worth of land as well as the building and equipment. So that's going to go down. And then we're going to say the accumulated depreciation. That's going to go down because it's a contra asset. So it goes down with a debit to this. And then we're going to say, all right, how about the liabilities? Let's transfer over some accounts payable over there to the new company. So the accounts payable, which I think should be this one. And I picked up the wrong account over here. Is that what I did? Pretty sure. Let's check it out. The accounts payable. This should be called accounts payable. It should be this one. I picked up the wrong cell, I believe, because the accounts payable should be at 21. Okay, I apologize for that. If that was bothering people, I'm sure it was. So now we're going to say that's the 21,000. And then we've got uh, the investment. And then let's record the difference in the investment. And that notice it's an asset account now because it represents our investment in a wholly owned subsidiary that now has these assets that we transferred over. So there we have this. So notice how, how kind of straightforward this is, uh, this transaction. We transferred everything basically as a, as a book value. We put it into one line item here, just representing our investment in uh you know ownership investment basically of the s corporation so let's say we're on s's books now s's books had no beginning balance what's going to happen to s's books well basically the opposite right but we're going to take the same number and, and and do basically the opposite well we're going to say well we transferred in cash we know that cash went in this time debited to book s s's books so that went up for that uh forty one thousand we know that the accounts receivable here so we're going to say accounts receivable is going to go up now the trick is going to be in the equity section down here because we issued stock so it's a little bit more tricky we're not going to have the investment you might be imagining well how's that in part going to work so we're going to say all right so wait for it that'll be the finale of this kind of thing it'll be great so we're going to say then this one's going to be the increase of the 21 or 23 and then we've got not the investment but the land we're going to pick up the land so the land is going to go up by the 1000 and then we've got the acu we got the building as well as the equipment building and equipment don't forget about the equipment that's going to be going up for the 74 72000 contra asset accumulated depreciation that was transferred to company S over here and I'm going to say that's going to be the 44,000. So notice the debits and credits are basically working this way. You know, we had to use negative numbers up top and so forth. So now we're going to go to the accounts payable, accounts payable here. And that's going to be a liability. So now I have to use a negative because I'm on the liability side of that number. Okay, so there we have that. Now we issued common stock. So the, the plug here is not simply gonna, I can't just say, okay, well, I could do that same thing and say, okay, well, now I've got the 123, which of course matches this 123 up here, but this, I can't just say investment. I have to say, what's gonna happen here? Well, they're gonna issue common stock. So we, they issued common stock. Okay, well, so all we have to do is then say, well, the plug goes to equity in essence. That 123 is basically equity. Equity that's owned by the owner. Who's the owner? The parent company. All we have to do now is format the equity section. So if they have a par value, you'll recall that the par, we have to put everything on the books at par value and then everything above par value will go into additional paid in capital. So in other words, we got to say, all right, well, what's the par value? Remember that this par value doesn't mean 
anything. It's just like an arbitrary number that could help help you to basically standardize the number of shares or easily see basically. So we got four nine zero zero times ten, right? As for is uh is that uh let's do that one more time. Four nine zero zero times ten. So forty nine thousand. All right. So I'm gonna say all right, forty nine thousand here. Let's do that calculation. I'm gonna to have to say negative to make it a negative number. So it's a negative times a positive. And I'm just gonna say that number times the 10, and that's gonna be the 49,000. And then I'm gonna pick up additional paid in capital. So, and that's gonna be the, the plug, right? So, you, so of course, what do we need to be in balance? We need the debits minus the credits. And notice again, having those credits negative numbers, how easy this is to do in Excel. It's just debits minus, it's the 74,000. So, and what you're doing is you're saying, well, here's the net, here's the net stuff that was received. So the 123,000 minus the, the, the common stock, which is the 49,000 here. And that'll give us, that'll give us what should go into additional paid in capital. So I'm going to use the plug formula, negative SUM, negative sum of all of this. And that should give us our 74. So then if I highlight the entire thing, it's now at zero, meaning the debits over here at the 188 equal the credits and then if we were to record this into the subsidiary we're going to say all right what's this look like then we're going to say cash is going to go up by the 41,000 the accounts receivable is going to go up by the 51,000 the other assets are going up by the 23,000 the land is going up by the 1,000 building by the 72 contra assets accumulated depreciation by the 44 the liability notice i'm saying the liability is going up in the credit direction because we're representing credits not with debits and credit columns over here but with debits positive credits negative and notice again how much easier it is to do that both with calculation purposes in excel and with just space in terms of not having six columns here but only three so i highly recommend you know, doing that. Well, that's how we're going to be doing it here. So then we're going to say that then the 49,000 for the common stock and then the additional paid in capital. So there we have it. So th this is our, our new subsidiary now that has been created. And we could see uh, it's it here. And if you take a look at the equity section, that's at the 123,000. The equity section represents what is owned by the company. So it's, it represents assets minus liabilities. So here's the assets minus the liabilities, 123,000 equals the equity 123,000 the equity represents what is basically the book value of the company basically the value of the company in essence and who owns the value of the company who owns that it's a hundred percent owned by the parent by the parent so how does the parent represent that well they represent that with this line item here that's basically equal to the equity section in the subsidiary of the 123,000